Hey guys, so let's move on to a program to find the sum from 1 to n using recursion. So when I'm finding sum from 1 to n, how do I visualize the sum is I visualize myself adding 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 till the number n. Let's say n is equal to 5. Sum of 5 is equal to 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5. Or let's say I can write it as 5 plus 4 plus 3 plus 2 plus 1 plus 0 let's say because in iteration we always start from uh, sum is equal to 0 let's so let's say I have started from 0 okay so I know 0 sum up to 0 is always 0 so let's say for this condition I will write it separately sum of up to 0 value is always 0 this is let's say an assumed condition Okay, so 5 plus 4 plus 3 plus 2 plus 1 plus, uh, let's say this is the condition. So, I will just leave out that plus for now. Now, how do I find the addition up till the first digit? Up till the first digit can be 1 plus sum of 0 because sum of 0 is anyway 0. So, 1 plus 0. So, that can be written as sum of 1. So, this will become 5 plus 4 plus 3 plus 2 plus sum up till the first digit. Okay. So, value of sum of 1 is 1. So, sum of 1 is equal to 1. What is 2 plus sum of 1? 2 plus 1 which is 3. This is the sum up till 2. 1 plus 2 which is 3. So, this 2 plus sum of 1 I am going to write it as sum of 2 and I am going to write the remaining numbers plus 3 plus 4 plus 5. Now, 3 plus sum of 2. What is sum of 2? This was sum of 2. 2 plus 1 which is equal to 3. So, sum of 2 is already 3. So, sum of 3 is going to be 3 plus the sum of 2 which is 2 it's going to be sorry sum of 2 which is 3 so this is going to be 6. So this is sum up till the 3 digits 1 plus 2 plus 3 which is already 6. So I can write this as sum till the number 3. Then I am going to write plus 4 plus 5. So what happens when 4 plus sum of 3 is done? 4 plus 6 which becomes 10. This is actually 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 meaning sum up till 4. So, I am going to write this as sum up till 4. Then 5 with the sum of up till 4 is 10. So, 10 plus 5 is 15 which is 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5. So, I can write this entire thing as sum of 5. See where did I start and where did I end. So, we can in short you can write it as you see sum of 2 is always 2 plus sum of 1. Sum of 3 is 3 plus sum of 2. So, I can write for any variable sum of n is equal to n plus sum of n minus 1. In this function itself, do you notice the recursive call that is happening? If I wrote, I am writing this in the form of a function, right, with brackets. This is also the similar syntax, similar format. It looks like a function call. So, there is a recursive call happening here. Now, till where do I stop? This keeps going. Let us see. Sum of 5 is equal to 5 plus sum of 4. The sum of 4 can be written as 4 plus sum of 3. Sum of 3 can be written as 3 plus sum of 2. Now, I am going backwards. I first started from the big number to reach sum of 5. Now, I am going backwards. So, this 3 plus sum of 2. 
sum of 2 can be written as 2 plus sum of 1. You can actually stop over here, okay? you can write sum of 1 is equal to 1 or we can go write 1 plus sum of 0 which value is 0. So, there is no more function called after this. So, this becomes your base condition. If the value of your n is 0, the value of the sum entirely is 0 like the entire function call value is 0. So, terminate the function call there. We can use a return statement to terminate a function call. So, if you were to write the sum, sum recursive call, let us write the return type later. I can write sum of n. I am going to use my return statement to terminate my function over here. So, let us say if n's value is 0, what will I return to the previous function call of sum of 0? I will return 0. So, I will return the value of n which is 0. If n is equal to equal to 0, terminate the program and return 0 back to the previous function call. Else, for all other conditions, what should it return back? It should return back that n sum is equal to n plus sum of n minus 1. So, I will be returning back n plus sum of n minus 1. This is the statement that is going to be returned back. Close the function. Now, 0 is also integer. n plus sum of n minus 1 is also going to generate an integer. So, the return type is going to be int. Let us work out this. Let us say n is equal to 5. So, n's value is first pass as 5. 5 equal to equal to 0 is false. Therefore, it returns. So, let us draw the function call stack. The function call stack starts from sum of 5. So, what is it returning back? It is returning back a variable plus another function call. So, we have to put it inside your function call stack. So, this returns back 5 plus sum of 4. So, next time the function is called with n value is equal to 4. So, this time what is returned? 4 is equal to equal to 0 is false. So, it returns back 4 plus sum of 3. The next function call goes with n is equal to 3. So, 3 is equal to equal to 0 is false thereby n plus sum of n minus 1. So, the n's value is 3, 3 plus sum of 2. The next time n is called with value 2. So, 2 is equal to equal to 0 is false thereby it goes to the next function call which is 2 plus sum of 1. 1 is equal to equal to 0 is false it goes to the next value which is 1 plus sum of 0. So, if n is equal to equal to 0 return 0 to the previous function call. So, when sum of 0 is generated it returns back 0 to the next function call meaning this becomes 0. So, 1 plus 0 is equal to 1. This 1 is the sum which is calculated here right it is being calculated. So, that will return back to the previous function call which is sum of 1 thereby all this gets removed and what remains here is 1. Now, 2 plus 1 is equal to 3 and this is returned back to the previous function call for sum of 2. So, 3 replaces the value over here and this becomes 3. Now, 3 plus 3 is equal to 6 which is returned back to the previous function call. So, all this is removed and the value comes here is 6. Now, 6 plus 4 is equal to 10. This is returned back to the previous function call. So, these get removed and the value comes here is 10. 5 plus 10 is equal to 15 and this is returned back to the initial function call. So, all this is removed and all that remains to pass the value is 15.
15 is returned back to the main program from where it is called. So, if you were to write the structure of the main program, you would write void main, you would take the input from the user for the value of n and you can just directly go on and print f sum is equal to percentage d and call sum of n. It will be printed at that spot. Value 15 will be printed over there. Now let us see this in the coding part. So we are going to type the code for printing the sum of the numbers from 1 to n using recursion. I am starting with a variable n in my void main and I have asked the user to enter the value of n and I have taken the value of n. Now here I will be printing the sum print f slash n sum up to percentage d for like I want to say sum up to n is equal to percentage d and I want to print the value. So the first one is the value of n and the second one is the function called with n. Now writing n the sum function let us leave the uh, data type of the function right now sum and it is taking int n as the parameter and what is my condition? It stops at 0. So, if n is equal to 0, I have to return 0. Else, I will be returning n plus sum of n minus 1. Now, these both are integer returns. So, my data type is going to be int sum and this will be int n. So, I've passed it. Let's check program works. So, I'm going to run the program. Sum up till 10 is 55. So, I'll check the sum up till 10. The value is 55. Thank you.